three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with a very, very special video. We got the Anime Wars Dragon Ball versus Attack on Titan. Yo, hey man, we say it all the time, what a time to be an anime fan, but in this case, what a time to be a subscriber of this channel too, I'm not gonna lie, it's always a movie we get to do these, but especially this one, I'm not gonna lie, we got the anime wars, like he said, Dragon Ball versus Attack on Titan, and I'm not gonna lie, both of these animes are legendary, both of them are top 10 animes of all time, but... How do you decide what anime is the better anime? Crollo, do you want to let them know? Hell yeah. So we have our five fingers of death, which is basically the five categories that we deem most important when it comes to judging and grading in anime. Starting with our first finger, story writing. The quality of the incidents versus the stretches of story writing. How good is the overall plot? Pretty self-explanatory. Our second finger, characters. Gotta have good characters. How good is the quality of the characters as well as the quantity of characters? Our third finger, relatability. How relatable are the characters? How relatable is the anime itself? And is it on a silver platter for you where it's right in your face? Or do you have to do a little bit of digging to find it? Our yes, sir. fourth finger being scene execution, hype scenes, vanilla scenes, animation, fight scenes, even the music, everything that goes into making a oh, scene man. as amazing as it is. How well did the anime do with that? And last but certainly not least, creativity. How creative is the world? How creative are the characters? How creative is the anime as a whole? Yes, sir. Amen. When you want to start with the first finger story writing, I'm not going to lie. Just talking about the quality of the story writing, you know, starting with Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball gets a lot of slander for its story writing being lackluster, which is, in my opinion, uncalled for. The only reason why it gets slandered is because people want ALT quality and everything. But funny how we say that. But when you want to talk about the Dragon Ball quality of the story writing, it's actually amazing. I mean, the story writing is amazing. Just starting from the very beginning, all of these is amazing. Watching Goku grow up. And then especially when you want to go all the way into the Saiyan saga. Like, everything was amazing. Seeing Frieza rock out. Like, everything was amazing. The Cell saga, the Boo saga, going all in the Dragon Ball Super. Like, it's so many incidents after incidents after incidents just keep happening where... Goku and the Z Fighters just rise to the occasion. And some could say it's a little repetitive, but the reality is Dragon Ball is not a story-driven anime. It's a character-driven anime. But even with that, the story is still delivered in time after time. But then when you want to go to the other side of the fence, oh, man, ALT is just one stretch of just flawless story writing. Like, ALT is debatably the king of story writing. Like... I'm not going to lie, when you want to talk about story writing, for me personally, this one is not really that close. Yeah, like, Dragon Ball story writing gets a lot of slack, but at the end of the day, the incidents that happen in Dragon Ball, it's like every incident is its own story in itself. Like, it, it has its own ending and plot, and then there's a big time skip in between usually, and then it goes into the next one. And each one, when you look at it individually... Is actually really nice like the way everything blends oh, yeah. together the way the characters fit into that story get their minutes get their shine like it's not the craziest story ever but to say it's bad is a reach it's a it's a bad take like at the end of the day Dragon Ball has two to three arcs that you could say is debatably a top 10 arc of all time the Frieza arc the Cell Saga, and really the Tournament of Power, like, or even the Goku Black arc. There's so many different arcs you could choose from where it's actually amazing story writing start to finish. It's not AOT, but it is amazing. But keep noticing how we keep saying it's not AOT. There's a reason for that. Like, 
AOT is literally, arguably, the greatest anime of all time when it comes to storytelling. So, when it comes to the first finger of death, this one is not really close. Yeah, it's a blow. Like, if it wasn't for One Piece, AOT would literally be the greatest anime story ever. So Exactly. It's kind but of a no contest. Had to, if you had to put a rating on it, even though it's going to be bad, if you had to put a rating on it, what would you do? It's going to sound bad because we just talked about how Dragon Ball story is good. So it's going to sound bad. But when you put it into perspective, we're comparing it to one of the greatest stories in all of fiction. So it's not exactly. that crazy to say that. Oof. I would probably say like 95.5. Yeesh. Like, damn. Like, <laughs> I was going to say 80.20. Like, damn. I ain't mad at it though because ALT is something great. again, ALT is in my opinion a top five fictional work for when you want to talk about story writing. So ninety five five is actually pretty. It sounds for- crazy, but this is ALT we're talking about. At least for story writing. Hell yeah! But when you want to move into characters. This is where it's low key. I don't know about ninety five five, but this is low key where it's the other way around. Like starting Hell with AOT, yeah. AOT has a nice bag of characters. All of the scouts that graduated with Aaron and them. You got Levi Squad, uh, Commander Irwin. There's a lot of great characters. You got the Titans on the other side, Annie Reiner, Berto. Uh, you got the cart titan, all of those, especially when you go into the later seasons and the whole other side was introduced. They had a lot of nice characters that were involved in a- AOT, and they all have some pretty nice quality, too. But when you want to talk about Dragon Ball characters, especially for quality, I mean, all of the Saiyans, like... And there's a lot of them, especially now that they started crossbreeding. Like, you got... Mm. uh. Gohan, Goten, Trunks, Future Trunks, Vegeta, Goku, like, it's literally, and that's just the sayings, when you want to talk about how amazing they are and the quality behind them, let alone Bulma, the rest of the Z Fighters, Chi Chi, like, Master Roshi, they got a whole roster, the main cast is brimming with quality, and they all get their minutes, and I feel like the scouts... When it comes to getting their minutes, and this goes into quantity, some of them didn't really get as much. Yeah. But at the same time, they're still nice characters. But I would definitely say, at least quality-wise, I'm giving that Dragon Ball. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, you know, I'm not going to lie. The more you actually think about it, this finger is a lot closer than it looks. Like, LT has a bag of characters don't get it fucked like levi aaron reiner mikasa annie there's so many hanj erwin connie like there's so many well written character every character not only do they have a nice duffel bag of character but there's quality to each character too there's depth to each character there's some lords behind each character too but When you want to compare it to the other side of the fence, this is where it gets dicey because Dragon Ball has arguably one of the greatest bag of characters of all time. I mean, it has so many Saiyans alone that just make the story amazing. But even going outside the Saiyan, you have characters like Beerus, Wiz, Broly. You have all of the Z fighters. Like, Dragon Ball has a deep bag of characters, too. And when you want to talk about the quality... I'm not going to lie, it's not that close. Like, I think the Saiyans alone could match any character in AOT. Then you want to go outside the Saiyans. That's what makes it runs away. So, when you want to talk about characters, I would give this to Dragon Ball. Yeah, I'll give it to Dragon Ball, too. Like, especially once they introduce characters like Beerus and Wiz, the other universes, Champa, Jiren, like... They got a roster, especially going into Super. I mean, good lord. Frieza, we didn't even mention. Cell, like, the villains, boo. like villains? Oh, my God. Dragon Ball has one of the greatest bag of villains alone. 
as well as one of the greatest villains in anime. Like, yeah, when you want to factor in all of the verse for characters, Dragon Ball runs away with it. But I don't think it's a blowout. If you had to put a number on it, how are you feeling? I'll probably say, I'll probably say, sixty forty. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking closer to fifty five forty five, but I'll probably say sixty forty. I think the same is what makes the yeah. Dragon Ball kind of run away with it for characters. Like they have a great bag of characters, but they really have a great bag of sayings. That's their specialty, especially because of how relatable they are. Moving into the next finger of death, I mean. When you want to talk about how relatable the characters are, as well as how relatable the anime is, do you have to go digging for it, or is it on a silver platter? Like, don't get me wrong, both animes are extremely relatable. So starting with AOT, the characters are amazing. The characters are relatable. They're human. Like, the relatability behind them, the insecurities, the anxiety that they face, as well as just the overall death to them is what makes them relatable. And this makes you somewhat see yourself in them. It's what makes them somewhat lovable. Then you want to talk about the world itself. AOT's world is actually very political to the point where you could make an argument that it's one of the most realistic animes out there world-wise. But when you want to look at the other side of the fence, the characters in Dragon Ball run away with the relatability. The same way how AOT runs away with the relatability for the world is vice versa for characters and then some. Like... Every saying, the relatability is through the roof to the point where if you're watching Dragon Ball all the way through, you may start busting push-ups or go to the gym. Like, that's the way the characters hit you. Just, it really clenches to your soul. It touches you. It speaks to you. Like, that's the kind of way that the characters resonate with you as well as what you're watching. Like, when you want to talk about how relatable the characters are, I would give that to Dragon Ball. But... When you want to talk about how relatable the world is, I would give that to AOT, which is why when you want to talk about which finger has more relatability or which show has more relatability between Dragon Ball and AOT, I'm kind of on the fence for now. Yeah, like, when you want to look at the characters and the relatability, um, AOT, there's definitely relatability in a lot of the characters, but you got to do a little more digging for it. Like... Aaron and Armin's dream of wanting to see outside the walls and be free from just being stuck in the walls. Like, you can mm -hmm. take that metaphorically and apply it to your real life, let alone there's a lot of other characters that have relatability in there when you really think about it. But that's the thing. Yeah. With Dragon Ball characters, especially the Saiyans, you don't have to think about it. It's right there for you on a silver platter. I mean, Vegeta's one of the Hell most yeah. relatable characters in fiction. Like let alone the rest of the Saiyans, their work ethic. Like, it's all it's all right there for you on full display. So when it comes to characters, definitely going Dragon Ball. But when you want to talk about the world, I'm probably going on the other side of the fence as well. Just because, I mean, when you look at Dragon Ball's world, they're both crazy as hell. But there's more relatable aspects, especially like you said, when you want to talk about political, how... The rich people were trying to get out the wall first and say, fuck all the people. Or they were hoarding food and staying in their castles, telling the scouts to fight harder and stuff like that. Like, there's mm -hmm. things you can take away from the AOT world that's much more relatable than Dragon Even Ball. Even with is hatred really, and fear. Yeah, like, it just really just, in Dragon Ball, it's a whole bunch of aliens coming down. I mean, unless yeah. it's something I don't know about. Like, yeah, and their world is Earth, but it's like Earth in like 2090. Like, yeah. it's that futuristic. But, and then it's also prehistoric. It's both. So, their world is relatable, but it's not nowhere near as relatable as AOT. But at the same time, the characters, ooh, okay. If I had to come off the fence, I'm thinking I may give. I don't know. Like, I'm thinking AOT because not only is the world relatable, but the characters are somewhat relatable. 
but they're not that relatable compared to the Dragon Ball characters. Like, I know the Dragon Ball world is not that relatable, but that's because the characters make up for it. Like, Dragon Ball is one of the most relatable animes out there, and that's all in the sands. Yeah, if I had to come off the fence, I'd give it to Dragon Ball, just because, like, AOT's world is definitely more relatable than Dragon Ball's world. I mean, even down to the fact that they were living in poverty inside the walls, like, fighting for food and all of that type of shit. Like, I don't know about the fighting part, but just having that and all the political aspects that we discussed, like, the world is definitely more relatable, but when it comes to the characters and even the world itself, you gotta, you kinda gotta dig for it a little bit, whereas... The Saiyans, let alone the main Saiyans that we're following, like Goku, Vegeta, even Gohan, like, they're so relatable, and it's literally shoved down our throats how relatable they are, to the point where it's one of, if not the most motivational anime you can watch. So, just after yeah. that, I would probably go Dragon Ball. I'm right there with you. If you had to put a number on it, how are you feeling? Because the way how I'm feeling... I'm probably going 52, 48. Like, AOT's world is extremely relatable, and that's the only reason why I can't. Like, the more I think about it, this I didn't think this finger would be that close. I'm not going to lie. I didn't either, but I, I'm basically right there with you. I was going to say 53, 47. Okay. Okay. Definitely very close. But right now, the count is 2-1 Dragon Ball. When you want to go into our next finger... Scene execution. Oh, this is a, this is gonna be very interesting. Starting with hype scenes. Alt <laughs> Alt has some hype ass scenes. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, it does. Like, yeah. But Dragon Ball is the king of hype. I'm not gonna lie. Like, just Super Saiyan, everything about it. I mean. Everything about what the characters are and what the anime is is literally built off hype. So it's like I'm probably gonna go Dragon Ball, but it's a lot closer than people may think. Like AOT got some shit, boy. If you had to put a number on it, like we're probably gonna have to put numbers on a lot of these because for hype scenes, Dragon Ball is debatably the king of hype scenes. I only have to say debatably because I think One Piece can go hype scene for hype scene with any anime. But when you want to talk about Dragon Ball's hype scenes, if it's not one, it's by default two, which is why I would give it over AOT. But AOT's top five too they when you want to talk shit, about bro. hype scenes. Like, they got some shit in their Duffy, which is immaculate. So I'm probably going to have to give this hype scenes probably like same shit we gave relatability, 53-47. Yeah, I'm right there with you, 53-47. Like, <laughs> woo, they got some, like, AOT isn't sprinkled with hype from beginning to end, but when it happens, oh, man, it'll have you jumping out your chair, like, but definitely mm -hmm. giving that one to Dragon Ball. But moving on to vanilla scenes. I'm not going to lie. This one's kind of interesting. Like, Dragon Ball's yeah. vanilla scenes are considered just straight-up fillers. Like, when you see Goku and Piccolo drag racing in cars and shit when they can fly. Like, they're, they're basically not, considered filler episodes. Whereas, AOT basically has no fillers. Like, it'll be them cleaning the house and then Levi come in with the skirt on and the mask. Like... That'll be AOT's hype scenes. And they be hidden, I'm not gonna lie. See, off-rip, vanilla scenes goes to Dragon Ball. But here's what I'll say about the AOT hype vanilla scenes. The AOT vanilla scenes are like Thriller Bark of One Piece during that stretch. In the sense of, we needed Thriller Bark because everything else was so dark and serious that the comedy was amazing. The AOT world is so fucked, and the story is so fucked, and everything going on is so fucked that when you get the vanilla scenes, it kind of feels like Dragon Ball in a sense, where it's like, oh, it's just nice to see. Like, seeing Levi clean rather than fighting for his life is pretty damn nice to see. Like, 
seeing them riding horses and seeing Hans talk about dissecting titans is pretty chill to see rather than seeing her always in battle like it makes the vanilla the vanilla scenes and aot are special like you got to take them with a grain of salt because they're rare but when you flip it over on one hand they're considered the filler but on the other hand when you actually look at what we're talking about dragon ball runs away with it like gohan softball uh, Goku learning to drive, all these different events like Goten playing with dinosaurs and shit. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the filler episodes in Dragon Ball are nearly as entertaining as the story in the sense of you don't. I feel like there's no dip in quality when the story strays away and goes to a filler. Like, you're not mad at it. Like, the story is amazing, of course, but when it goes away from it and it goes to the fillers, you're sitting there enjoying the fillers like this the same way how you would enjoy a hype scene. Like, I think Dragon Ball definitely runs away with the vanilla scenes, and I also think Dragon Ball has some of the best vanilla scenes. Not the best vanilla scenes, but some. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Like, AOT's vanilla scenes, it's like a break, like a much-needed break from all the crazy-ass yeah, yeah. shit that's going on, because... AOT doesn't have filler episodes to do that. Like, they gotta find time whenever there's some sort of break in action to give you something that you can relax while watching before you jump back into that bullshit. That's what AOT's vanilla scenes are. Whereas, a uh, Dragon Ball's vanilla scenes is literally just completely unrelated. They just be chilling, doing whatever. Like, even just seeing when uh, Goku, Gohan, and Krillin were just laying back on the beach looking up at the sky like this. Like, that's dope as shit to watch. So, hell yeah. Definitely, Dragon Ball runs away with vanilla scenes, 100%. Definitely. Now, moving into animations, animations is interesting because it really depends on how you look at it. Like, because Dragon Ball came out so long ago, so obviously the animations in OG Dragon Ball was ashy. Dragon Ball Z was ahead of its time, though. When you want to look at the animations, the fight choreography, it was definitely ahead of its time coming out so long ago and still holding up today. And then, of course, Dragon Ball Super... People... Dragon Ball Z's animations were so good that when they went to Dragon Ball Super, which is technically more crisp, niggas hated it. Like, yeah. that's how good Dragon Ball Z's animation was. And looking when that came out... And Dragon Ball Super has some nice animations too. It's just they be reusing scenes sometimes. Now, mm. when you want to go over to AOT's animations, AOT is crispy. I ain't gonna lie. Like, especially like the first three seasons before they switched studios. And even when they switched studios and had more of a kind of CGI looking look or like a 3D animation look to it, it was still great animation. Um,. Me, personally, I prefer the other animation, but the new one wasn't bad. Um, but this yeah. one's kind of hard to judge, really. Yeah, this one's kind of really kind of hard to judge. I feel like it's a little unfair to Dragon Ball. Like, I kind of got to give it to AOT by default, but, like, again, I kind of feel like it's a little unfair, but when you look at the animations, it's more than just the scenes. Like, look at the water in AOT, how beautiful it is. Like, the simplest shit, the trees, like, everything, the backgrounds. Like, I feel like the background in AOT is just a lot more aesthetically pleasing than it is in Dragon Ball. Then you want to talk about the actual animation of scenes. Like, Dragon Ball's animation is amazing, and the Z animations are amazing, too. A lot of people missed it, like he said, and they hold up to today. But the ALG animations are extremely clean. Yeah. Like, as crazy as what everything is going on, niggas flying around in the air, flipping, doing shit on, with ODM gear, all that crazy shit, and you can still see it clearly just because how crisp the animations are. So I would give animations to ALT, but it's kind of unfair to Dragon Ball. But yeah. even, even with that being said... I'm taking AOT's animations over Dragon Ball Super's animations, which was airing with AOT. So, 
It's unfair, but even when those is I'd still give it to AOT. Yeah, yeah, I would still give it to AOT. And it's kind of horseshit if you're a Dragon Ball fan, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. I'm sorry. That's how, that's how the cookie <laughs> crumbles. <laughs> but when you want to move into music, music, I'm not going to lie. Dragon Ball soundtrack fits perfectly for Dragon Ball, like in every moment. Yeah, like, especially one of the biggest ones that pops out to me is when Gohan went Super Ooh. Saiyan 2, just the theme in the background. Like, the villain themes. Like, they hit when they're used. Let alone the themes of just transitions and that type of thing. They're iconic. But AOT's soundtrack is a different beast. Like... Thank you. Oh, man. Like, the scenes are already absurd without the music but the music gets your blood boiling like it I'm gets not your gonna heart rate up like I think Dragon Ball debatably has a top 5 anime soundtrack debatably like you really have to sit there and analyze it but I don't think there's any debates I think AOT easily has a top 3 anime soundtrack the only reason why I don't say one is because Bleach and Naruto exist but AOT can easily go song for song with both of those two like oh man there's so many bangers especially when you want to throw in the intros and outros you don't have to do that but you can like when you want to talk about the music all around, AOT runs away with it. Yeah, it's not close. But that's 2-2 two, two so far for scene execution. And mm -hmm. the last category, I think we know where that's going when you want to go into fights. AOT has some nice fights. Like, Annie vs. Aaron was nice. Them taking down the Colossal Titan, Levi vs. the Beast Titan... Especially the final battle. All of these fights are nice, but this is no contest. It's Dragon Ball we're talking yeah. about. Like they they got their claim to fame off fights. Like it, it's not even close. I'm not gonna lie. It, it's it's not even worth comparing. I'm not gonna lie. Like when you want to talk about AOT's fights, they're actually really amazing and not what you would expect considering what the anime is. Yeah, Dragon Ball has the best fights in anime. Like, what are we talking about? I will say, though, I did not expect scene execution to come down to the wire like this. Like, just off of that, Dragon Ball is definitely the winner here. But if you had to put a number on it, how are you feeling? Because me personally, I'm damn near it. Like, if it wasn't for fights, I would say tie. And I feel like fights are a little bit unfair, too, just because of what Dragon Ball is compared to what AOT is. Like... That's just not what AOT is going for at the end of the day. It's just still Shonen. But it is unfair, but animation is also unfair. That's just how the cookie crumbles, right? That's just how the cookie crumbles. But if you put a number put a on number. it, I ain't going to hold you. I'll probably go like 50.5, 49.5. Like, it's really that close. Like Here and here type shit. Yeah, it's literally here and here. Like... It like, really depends what point, you value at the end of the day, because AOT's exactly. execution is crazy. It's crazy. Like we're going with Dragon Ball, but seeing execution, I think AOT is literally the right behind it. Like it's like Lightning McQueen in that other car when they finish. Yeah, that, but, that, that that green nigga. <laughs> yeah, but if you had to go into the last finger of death, yeah, when you want to talk about how creative the anime is. How as well as how creative the world is and how creative the characters are. I'm not going to lie. The creativity is through the roof for both AOT and Dragon Ball. Just starting with Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is insane. I mean, the creativity is insane. We talked about it in the Talk of Tokyo. If you haven't already, go watch it. But we had the topic of who had the deeper toolbox, Goku or Luffy. You know, Big Dog Luffy had the deeper toolbox, but whole new story. The point is, there's so many moves in Dragon Ball that's so creative, and that's just Goku. Then you want to talk about the entire world. Everyone damn near has their own different toolbox, and there's so many different characters. The characters themselves are very creative. The verse itself is very creative. Like, 
it's not bound to just Earth. That's part of the reason why AOT ran away with creativity for its world because the Dragon Ball world goes outside of just Earth. It goes to different planets. It goes to different universes. Mm -hmm. Like, it covers so much ground with the creativity for when you want to talk about how creative the world is. Then you want to talk about how creative the characters are. There's so many different races, dog. I'm not going to lie. Like, oof. If it wasn't for the fact that AOT is extremely creative, I would say this is a blowout. But that's why I would say, like, ugh, I'm leaning towards Dragon Ball. But to give AOT its grace, when you want to talk about how creative AOT is, AOT is, like, you literally can't think of the idea. Like, the idea hasn't been thought of before. Like, you bite your fucking thumb and turn into a titan, and it got transformed into an entire story around it. So many different titans, like humans being caged, fighting for freedom, like the aspect of freedom and how far it drove the MC. Like the creativity in AOT is through the roof, and the story itself, I think, is probably one of the most creative parts of AOT, aside from the world and the characters. Yeah, like. AOT is insanely creative, and it's one of the most creative animes of all time, which is a big reason Easy. why it is easily a top five anime of all time. And the the whole aspect of having Titans, let alone the fact that people turn into Titans, like, that in itself, I don't think I've ever seen so no shit like that. Like, when you yeah. want to talk about just the, the characters' abilities and how they move the ODM gear... The world and how it's set up. We didn't even know there was a whole other continent full of niggas. Let alone that they were at war with each other. The way the story went was very creative. But I'm giving this to Dragon Ball and it's really not that close. When you want to look at the world of Dragon Ball. Like like you said, they go to whole different universes. But even when you want to stay on Earth. Just looking at what it looks like. They got dinosaurs on Earth. With futuristic niggas flying through tubes, hover cars, spaceships, and you got aliens walking around like it's nothing. Then you want to go into the characters, the aliens, thinking of all of these different aliens and their abilities and their moves and how strong they are. Like, it's, it's honestly not that close. Like, you got yeah. niggas like Piccolo, Beerus, Majin Buu, like... Yeah, going to other the universes character. to fight. You got Zeno up top that can snap his fingers and delete a universe. Like, mm. it's not close, bro. It's really not. It's really not. But that's creativity. If you had to put a number on it, how are you feeling? Like, I think AOT is a top 10, debatably top 5 most creative anime of all time. Somewhere in that 10 to 7 ball range. But... I think Dragon Ball is a top five most creative anime of all time, debatably top three. Like, can't say top one because we all know why, but it's around there. So if I had to put a number on it, I'd probably give drag. I'd probably give it to Dragon Ball fifty five forty five. I probably go. I probably go sixty forty. Like Dragon Ball, just the just the aspect of leaving Earth is not something that we see often in anime. Like, mm. you have isekais when they get transported to another world, but then they stay... It's really just the same planet, but a different variation, almost. Like, yeah, Dragon Ball is literally leaving the universe to go to other universes with whole different characters, whole different gods. Like, it's actually unbelievable. Like... I'm right there with you. I think AOT is somewhere between that 10 to 7 range all time for creatability. I think Dragon Ball is in the top three. Not one. Oh, yeah. It's debatable if it's two or three, but I think it is top three when it comes to creatability. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But, hey, man, that's the five fingers. What is that? Is that 4 1 Dragon Ball? Uh, Story writing was AOT. Characters was Dragon Ball. Relatability was Dragon Ball. Scene execution was Dragon Ball. So, yeah. 4 1 Dragon Damn. Ball. Who the hell would have thought? Because it sure in hell wasn't me. But <laughs> <laughs> going Shit. off the five fingers of death, Dragon Ball is the better anime. And it kind of runs away with it. Now, I will say 
it was still close finger by finger. Like, creativity and story writing were the only two blowouts, and they both went to the different side. The other three, scene execution, uh, characters. Characters was kind of a blowout, but scene execution and uh, relatability was very close. But that's just the five fingers of death, and by default, that makes Dragon Ball a better anime. But if you had to go off your personal opinion... Which anime do you feel like is the better anime? See, for me, the reason I thought this Five Fingers of Death would go differently, even if Dragon Ball won, I thought it'd be like 3 2 or something, not 4 1. But yeah. the reason I thought that is because, in my personal top 10 animes of all time, because they both are top 10 all time, I have Dragon Ball at 7 and I have AOT at 5. So Honestly, that's why it's like it's kind of interchangeable. It really kind of depends on what you value. Do you value hype and fights over story, or do you value story over hype and fights? And even though they both have both of those, it's like kind of pick your poison. Me personally, I truly value and cherish AOT's story. So I would say AOT's the better anime. But I don't see, think I'm there's right a wrong answer here. I'm not going to lie. I'm right there with you, and the reason why I don't think there's a wrong answer is because I think when you want to talk about which finger is the most important, we had this conversation. We already said it. Characters is the most important finger, but it's not by a blowout. It's story writing is the second most important. And when you want to look at how this anime war went, the story writing was a blowout. Characters really wasn't that much of a blowout. It was pretty close between AOT and Dragon Ball. But when you want to talk about the characters for Dragon Ball, top 10 bag, maybe top 5 bag. But when you want to talk about the story writing for AOT, it's top 2 all time and only 2 because One Piece exists. Like, I'm not going to lie. If you wanted to ask me off of my personal opinion, I could go either way. I literally have Vegeta tatted on my left shoulder. But at the same time, I would probably have to go with Attack on Titan. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm not going to hold you. Whatever side of the fence you're on, you got to admit it's close. Because they're both fantastic. But They're both fantastic. Hey, man, that's the Five Fingers, or Anime Wars for Attack on Titan versus Dragon Ball using the Five Fingers. Let us know in the comments what you think about all five categories. Also, let us know... Which anime do you think is better? But, hey man, with that being said, make sure you hit oh, yeah. that like button. If you enjoyed this video, hit the bigger subscribe button if you haven't already. And turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss our next anime wars or any of our other special videos. We drop straight bangers on this channel, yeah. so make sure you guys tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys click on our description. There will be two links waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo, on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. You feel me? Come on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe out with us. Talk about anything. Anime, non-anime, sports, movies. It don't matter. But, uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOT out.